uncovering the distinct mechanism of action of halivin aribulin mesylate injection, a non-taxane inhibitor of microtubule dynamics. The content of the animation is based on preclinical studies. Halivin is indicated for the treatment of patients with metastatic breast cancer who have previously received at least two chemotherapeutic regimens for the treatment of metastatic disease. Prior therapy should have included an anthracycline and a taxane in either the adjuvant or metastatic setting. Important safety information will be reviewed at the end of this video. Unregulated proliferation is characteristic of cancer cells. During mitosis, microtubules form from soluble tubulin dimers within the cell. Individual microtubules transition frequently between growth and rapid depolymerization. This dynamic instability is crucial to the assembly and function of the mitotic spindle as microtubule ends seek to capture chromosome kinetochores. Microtubule dynamics is an essential component of mitosis. Inspired by the naturally occurring product halochondrin B and developed by Azi, halivin aribulin mesylate injection is the first agent in the halochondrin class. It is a non-taxane chemotherapy agent with a distinct binding profile. Microtubules contain many potential binding sites for dynamics inhibitors. Halivin binds with high affinity to the growing plus ends of microtubules, inhibiting growth. Halivin does not affect microtubule shortening, allowing existing microtubules to depolymerize. Halivin also binds soluble tubulin dimers, preventing them from contributing to microtubule growth and sequestering them into non-productive aggregates. This results in further microtubule depolymerization. Through these processes, halivin causes irreversible mitotic blockage, resulting in cell death by apoptosis. As a non-taxane microtubule dynamics inhibitor, halivin inhibits microtubule growth, does not affect microtubule shortening, and sequesters tubulin dimers into non-productive aggregates. Through this distinct binding profile, halivin causes irreversible mitotic blockage resulting in apoptosis. Important safety information for halivin aribulin mesylate injection. Prior to each dose, it is important to monitor patients' blood counts and increase the frequency of monitoring in patients who develop grade three or four cytopenias. Delay administration and reduce subsequent doses in patients who experience febrile neutropenia or grade four neutropenia lasting longer than seven days. In 12% of patients, 62 out of 503, severe neutropenia, Patients with an absolute neutrophil count less than 500 per cubic millimeter lasted more than one week. Patients with elevated liver enzymes greater than three times the upper limit of normal and bilirubin greater than 1.5 times the upper limit of normal experienced a higher incidence of grade four neutropenia and febrile neutropenia than patients with normal levels. Grade three and grade four neutropenia occurred in 28% and 29% of patients who received halivin. Febrile neutropenia occurred in 5% of patients, and two patients, 0.4%, died from complications. Patients should also be monitored closely for signs of peripheral motor and sensory neuropathy. Grade 3 peripheral neuropathy occurred in 8% of patients, and grade 4 in 0.4% of patients who received halivin. In any of these instances, delay administration of halivin until a resolution to grade 2 or less. In 5% of patients, neuropathy lasted more than one year.
Twenty-two percent of patients developed a new or worsening neuropathy that had not recovered within a median follow-up duration of 269 days, a range of 25 to 662 days. Peripheral neuropathy was the most common adverse reaction resulting in discontinuation, 5 percent. Halivin is expected to cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman. Patients should be advised of these risks. Additionally, halivin should not be used to treat patients with congenital long QT syndrome. In an uncontrolled electrocardiogram study including 26 patients, QT prolongation was observed on day 8, independent of aribulin concentration with no prolongation on day 1. Electrocardiogram monitoring is recommended for patients with congestive heart failure, bradyarrhythmias, concomitant use of drugs that prolong QT interval including class 1A and 3 antiarrhythmics and electrolyte abnormalities. Correct hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia prior to initiating halivin and monitor electrolytes periodically during therapy. The most common adverse reactions, 25% or greater, reported in patients receiving halivin were neutropenia, anemia, asthenia and or fatigue, alopecia, peripheral neuropathy, nausea, and constipation. The most common serious adverse reactions reported in patients receiving halivin were febrile neutropenia and neutropenia.